Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, I was thinking of a message for today. It's pre-family and friends day, amen? First time in history we are doing new things through him. Um, I just want to take um, today to just encourage everyone. I, I, don't, I don't know how the message is going to go. <laughs> That's the funny thing about it. I don't know what the Lord is going to say. I don't know how he's going to deliver. But I know the pastors were preaching a message. As you know, we were in the series. And Pastor Sierra Singletary, she was preaching um, the message, Conk Me In. You remember that message? And who was there for that message? Conk Me In Jesus, right? She said, say it like a pastor. Conk Me In Jesus. Amen? And then before the Sunday before, um, Pastor, Pastor Corey preached the message, Faith and, not f- and No Faith. Do you remember that story? When Jesus was laying in the boat, he went to sleep. Do you remember that story? So, so he, he said, let's go to the other side. And he went in the boat. I'm just going to give a small little recap real quick. He went in the boat and then he went to sleep while the boat was filling with water. And it was rough. And they forgot what he said in the beginning. And then they start worrying. They're like, what's going on? Why is he sleeping? Come help us empty this boat out. But he gave them a word in the beginning. He said, let's go to the other side. Amen? So that's what I want us to focus on today. Is the word that God gave each, of, each one of us. And how sometimes, one, we lose, we lose focus on, on that word. But if we, if we stay focused on it, how 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 he always keeps his promise in the end. Amen? Amen. So you, you got to help me preach. If you don't help me preach, we're going to be here till 3 o'clock. Amen. Now that's what I'm talking about. The people of the Lord are in the house. Woo! Till 3 o'clock. But if you, if you don't, if you help me, we'll be out in 30 minutes. I, I can't promise that. <laughs> The church people get excited to leave church early. <laughs> so for a subject, I, I wrote down promise keeper. That's what the Lord gave me. So the, how I, I came up with this message is that Pastor um, Sierra was preaching. Um, and I was sitting all the way in the back. And then I just, I just saw this message as a, as a vision. It just, it just like a glimpse. I, I, was, I was sitting there and I was like, Wow. That makes, that makes sense. That makes sense. Count me in Jesus. Because what happened is that the Bible says that no faith is the substance or the evidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. And that's the part that we struggle with. So faith is being sure that something will happen even when we can't see how it will happen. Confidence meaning depending completely upon God and his strength to handle the things in our life. Assurance meaning firm, firm persuasion, full confidence or trust. Freedom from doubt. Freedom from doubt. Certain expectation. The utmost certainty. And then the Bible also talks about, with, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. And I can see how that, that, that correlates with each other. Because the things that God promises, we don't see how we're going to get there. But we are going to get there if we believe. Amen? For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen? So the first verse came from Hebrew 11 and 1, and the second verse came, um, came from Ele- um, Hebrew 11 and 6. six. So this, those two verses just tell me that we need faith in order to get through our journey. Amen? We, can, we cannot travel through this Christian walk without faith. And when we say, count me in, Jesus, we have to have faith and we have to believe that he is who we say he is. That's the only way you're going to make it 
from point A to point B. That's the only way you're going to fulfill the purpose that God has in, has in store for you. Amen? I want to take you to um, Joshua 6. And it's a, it's a long chapter, but I'm going to summarize it in, as I go through it. So Joshua 6, 1 through 27. That's, the, that's when God gave um, Joshua the city of Jericho. Amen? And I know we all are familiar, familiar with that story, but I, I want you to pay attention to something that happened within those seven days. And then while you're, while you're paying attention to what happened within those seven days, think of your life and think of what you would have done within those seven days. And then think of what you have done within those seven days. But what if you had just did exactly what God had told you to do? What if you had just followed the instruction as it was given? Because sometimes we, 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 we look at the person giving the instruction, but we don't think about where the instruction is coming from. And if you go back into the Bible, you can see where God used a donkey to, to minister to somebody. And I can only imagine if God was to use a donkey to minister to some of you, you wouldn't even pay attention. If a parrot was talking to you, you wouldn't even want to hear the parrot talking to you. You'd be like, oh, somebody trained the parrot to say that. We would come up with all kind of excuses why it is not of God. But then if we had just followed the instruction, first, let's go back to that verse. It said, you must believe that he is. You have to believe. And then if you don't have the faith enough to believe, which only what is required is a mustard seed. And I, I was trying to think of that. It's not that much. It's, 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 it's a little thing. That's all you need. So when a word is spoken over your life, when an instruction is given, all you need is that faith. That same faith you had when you gave your life to Jesus. You remember that first refresher when how excited you got? How, how, how motivated you was during that time? Oh my God, I just gave my life to Jesus. You went and tell all your friends and now we can't get you to say nothing to nobody. What happened to that faith? It's still a grain of mustard seed. Nobody's asking for red beans faith. Nobody is asking for string bean faith. <laughs> Just a little mustard seed faith. The same faith you had when you gave up at the altar. Because that's what you did. You're like, Lord, I've tried every single thing. And I want to try you today. That's what you did. A point, of, a point of no return where you were tired of being tired of being tired of being tired. They say the, uh, the idea or the, the pattern of going in circles and doing the same thing over and over again is insanity, right? That you can't get no different results from doing the same thing over and over and over again. And we have done so much things over and over and over and over again and still expecting to be at another level. But the way that God operates is that he's saying that you need faith. In order to please me. You need faith to believe who I am. And then if you believe who he is. Then you will believe the words that he gave unto you. And then when you believe that word that he gave unto you. The word will come to life because of your belief. If you don't believe. Then you will continue just going in circles. Because you will never apply that word to your life. That will change your life. My dad preached a message. He said, um, they won't let us finish. That's a good message. And then in this, in, this, in this story, you realize that the thing about us as humans, and I'll say it that way, is that we don't stick around long enough to reap the benefits of the word of God. We don't. We, we love walking up to the altar call. We love our hands being laid upon us. We love a whole bunch of oil put on our forehead. But as soon as we, we walk out the door, we forget the word that was given unto us. 
And most of the time that we receive a prophecy, it has so much instruction inside of it. It never say that you're going to get a brand new house and did not give you instruction of how you're going to receive the house. It never tell you you're going to walk into a new job and it never tells, it, it, it always gives you instruction of how you're going to walk into that new job. It never tell you that when you walk into your house, the money is going to fall right off your ceiling and then you're going to wonder where it came from. Because that's not how God operate. Because he's testing your faithfulness. He's testing whether or not you believe in the word that, he, that the prophet just speak. Whether you believe in the word that the pastor just gave you. Whether you believe in the word that the sister just spoke into your life. Because some people are very particular of people. They will receive from Pastor Corey, but they won't receive from Sister Katana. They will receive from Sister Katana, but they won't receive from Sister Destiny. But God has no respect of person. He can use anybody and everybody to be a blessing to your life. Even this unsafe person can be a blessing to your life. Have you ever been ministered to by an unsafe person? <laughs> They check you, don't they? <laughs> Tell the truth. God show up, know how to put people to keep you accountable. Ain't you save? I thought you go to church. Why are you acting like that? It will keep you in check. That's God using that person to make sure you stay straight. Amen? Amen? And if you don't see that, you'll get in your flesh and be like, mind your business. None of your business. I'm going to do whatever I want. And then you miss out on what God was trying to teach you during that time. Amen? Amen. Let's go to Joshua real quick. We're not going to go through the entire, the entire chapter, but I just want to touch on some verses in there. You got me, Sister Sabrina? She's supposed to be ready. So here is a story of how God gave his people under the leadership of Joshua total victory over the city of Jericho. A few points I want to capture from this chapter. The first one is that God made a promise to Joshua. Amen? So if you can read for me, um, Joshua 1, and I'll tell you when to stop. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every main stri man straight before him. And Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said unto them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. Let's stop right there. Amen. So you see in the, first, in the first verse, all the way down, God gave specific instructions. Amen? And he gave the entire little story of exactly what's going to happen within seven days. So have you ever received instruction from God? of something, concerning something that would have happened within a particular amount of time. But even within the instruction, he gave you a bunch of instructions of specific things that you had to do in order to get that victory that you're looking for. Whether it's for a job, whether it's for another level inside your spiritual life, 
whether it's with your family, whether it's in relationship, whether it's in any of those things, he, he made a promise to you. He gave you the instructions. He told you what the end result was going to be. And understand in this story, he's not asking them to pick up their weapons and start fighting. He's not, he's not telling them to put dynamites next to the wall, which these are things that we can physically see, right? That, that's the things that we would expect. That's the only way to break this wall down, not to walk around it seven times. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So he's telling you things to do that don't even seem correct, that don't even seem the way that it's supposed to go. But remember, in the beginning, we talk about faith. You have to believe that he is a deliverer. You have to say he is. Amen? And then so with that, this, this specific instruction he gave him concerning the walls of Jericho going around it six times. And on the seventh day, he wants him to go around it seven times. And then, only then after he has followed that instruction, on the seventh time around, that's what the verse says, when he, when he told the people to shout, that's the... So during the sixth time, they couldn't say nothing. They can talk. They can do nothing. They just walk around. They couldn't make no noise. So they go around one day. And they came back to the camp. So just imagine that the Lord asked you to do something, and you got excited the first day. You're excited. Some of us want it instant. We go, we go around the first day, and we want that instant grits, Instant mac and cheese, instant potato salad, instant mashed potatoes, instant cream of wheat. The first day. The second day, they went around again doing the same thing and went back to the camp. But just think of us. We still want it instant. So the second time it doesn't work, some of us fell off. We stopped coming to church. The pastor lied to me. He told me I was supposed to have that house. I was supposed to be a millionaire by now. And that instant mashed potatoes. Right? Instant. We want that instant blessing. We want somebody to write us a check. On the fourth day. They went around and did the same thing and went back to the camp. What would you have done on the fourth day? Imagine if pastor was to say, I need you to come to church seven Sundays straight. Don't miss one and be on time. That's the word of the Lord. Be on time for seven days. <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the job that you believe in God for is going to come. Is, the door is going to open for you. The relationship you believe in God for is going gonna, is gonna to happen. But this is going to happen. Come to church. For seven Sundays on time in a row consistently. Because they, came, they, they went around the wall seven times every day, one time a day, until they got to the seventh day. That was the instruction that God gave them. Now, I was, I, I was using my imagination and I was like, man... I'll be tired. I walked around the church, a little bit of chairs there, and I said, let me walk around this seven times. Let me see what that feels like. And that's not even around the walls of Jericho. And I was like, whoo, I'm feeling a little dizzy. But understand is that this is the, the thing that we do whenever we are given instructions. We find every reason to get out of it. 
I'm, I'm good for it. <laughs> I'll get, try to get out in a minute. But the thing about it is that when, when, when Joshua gave the instruction, the people did not question him. They did not say, why do we have to be here at 9.30 in the morning? Why do you want me to work at this job for this long? Why do I need to talk to this sister? I don't even like her. Why, why, why? All the whys that we ask when God give us instruction. Why do I need to go back to this family? I don't even care about them anyways. They not look out for me when I was younger. Why do I need to build a relationship with this person or that person or my baby daddy or my baby mama, whatever the stuff you have going on. When God gives you instruction, why are you asking so many questions? If, I, if he told you what the end result is going to be, why are you so concerned about the process? He said, keep your eyes on the prize. Understand that he, Peter never started sinking until he stopped looking at Jesus. Jesus is the prize. So the thing about, about the people walking around the walls of Jericho, one day, two days, three days, four days, five days, six days, they kept their eyes on the prize. They understand the word of God. They knew who he was. They believed in him. Because he has not let them down yet. He is a promise keeper. And if he say he was going to deliver the city, he is going to deliver the city. But listen, listen, listen to how technical it got. On the seventh day, they had to walk around the wall seven times. So the thing about it is that the closer you are to your blessing is the harder it's going to get. But then that's when we give up. That's when we throw in the towel. That's when we say we don't want to do this no more. That's when you walk off the job and say, forget this. I don't have to take that. And the whole time between day one and the sixth day, he was trying to humble you. Trying to show you that you had an attitude that you need to get rid of. Your enemy stinks. It doesn't represent Christ. And he was trying to work on you during those six days. But guess what? You got tired. And then when your blessing was right on the, on the seventh day, when you just had to go around seven times. And I know you're tired because God knows they were maybe tired. But they kept their eyes on the prize. And they keep pushing. And they keep pressing. And the thing I always say, whenever you, you reach to the end, if you ever see people that are running, they have, a, they have a steady pace the entire way around, right? But as soon as they get to that last, that last time around, they sprint. And they go full speed ahead. You use all the energy, everything inside of you. Because it doesn't make no sense to have done six days and to give up. You use faith for six days. So for me, you came to church. Every, we came to church every Sunday. We've been in church all our life for some of us. Me. Right? Doesn't it count for something? Do you want all of that to be in vain? I don't want to. I don't want to have to do, have have done all of this, and still, when I get to heaven, the Lord is saying, "I don't know you," because I did not do and believe exactly what He told me to do, or I not believe enough to follow His instruction. And that's that's where, that's where we we lack. And that's where we that's that's where we miss out on is that we don't stay long enough to reap the benefit. Oh, I'm tired of coming to church. I'd rather wash my car on a Sunday morning. Suit yourself. Then you'll reap the benefits for that. I know Pastor Corey said something like, the earth is, the earth is not, you're saying that every, you can have anything you want. This girl was singing, it's yours. Whatever you want, it's yours. But that doesn't mean it's good for you. 
Because whatever, whatever you, you, you allow in your spirit, in your circle, if you don't ask, Lord, is it your will that I have this? And get his answer or his response to it. Whatever you allow in your spirit, then the results of it is whatever the results is. And it might not be his will, but it was your will. And you will rip for that. Amen? So understand on the seventh day, on the seventh day, they went around seven times. So my first point was that God made a promise to Joshua, and we read that. And then God was given, Joshua was given specific instruction that he had to deliver to, the, deliver to his people. And the people obeyed without questioning. Some of us are too open, opi, uh, what, what's that word? Opi, opinionated? Opinionated. And I needed some way to say it so I could say it right. Opinionated. We, it's all about, we, we have our own thing going on. How long church is going to be? I got stuff to do. Busy buddies, always busy, 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 busy. Pastor, how long is that going to take? What day is that? That's past my sleeping time, my bedtime. We have all these opinions. It's, that's why the Bible said to come, to come, we have to come as, as little children. Because little children, you tell them to come, they just, just come. They, they, don't ask, you know, they don't ask you no know, questions. You tell an adult something, then they have about 24 questions they have to ask you. It's like playing Jeopardy. Where is your faith? The, the, the end result was communicated. So if the end result was communicated and you, we want to get to the end result, why aren't you just going through the process? Amen. So the process took seven, day, seven days, yet they remained faithful. Seven days, but they remained faithful for the entire process. And I couldn't imagine what happened during the seven days. If you remember the story of Noah, Noah building the ark, you remember that there were people standing and they were mocking him. And they were like, what on earth are you doing? It hasn't rained for years and you're building an ark. Are you crazy? So imagine the other cities looking at them. What are they doing? Mark walking around the wall. I mean, the Lord is going to deliver this city to you. I mean, all you're doing is just walking around. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? But this, this, this is what they're going through, and they still remain faithful. So just imagine, like, in your life where God has promised you something, and then you're he hearing all the other stuff around you. You ain't going to be nobody. You ain't never going to make it. You're not smart enough. You're not good enough. You're not qualified. Who are you? Some people like to bring up your past. Oh, ain't you the one that was on the side of the street begging for, begging for money 10 years ago? <laughs> They'll remind you every little thing that you did wrong because that's all they want you to remember. But the thing about it is that you got to keep your eyes on the prize. And you got to remain faithful no matter what. I always say, the Bible said, you'll be faithful over a few things. It'll make you rule over many. The few things could be just one thing. So they were faithful over going around the wall seven days and doing exactly what the prophet instructed. And on the seventh day, the wall came down and they had total victory. Amen? Total victory. They went into the city. They, again, even going into the city, they had instructions. So the instructions they had going into the city, he said, take nothing out of the city except for the gold and the silver. And then save the lady that, that, that housed the spies. That was the only thing that, but everything else was to be destroyed. The cows, the, the donkey, the chicken, the man, woman, every single thing. Because anything, if they were taking anything else from that city, it would be cursed, and you don't want to carry that curse thing into their camp. Amen? So even when you reach your end result, there's instructions that God gives you during that time. 
Don't get so high, high, mighty that you great, that you got promoted, and all, my, all of a sudden you don't want to come to church because you make too much money now. <laughs> Some people get that way. They put their nose up. They don't want to hang around you no more because you, you, you eat still eat at McDonald's and they, they're eating at somewhere else. Some people get that way. They don't, want, they don't want you riding in their car because they got leather seats and you're still riding there with, with um, cloth seat. <laughs> but I'm just saying, some people get that way. They forget where they started from. They forgot where God brought them from. And they forgot the instruction that when you get up that level, or whatever level that God take you to, you forgot the instruction that he gave you. All what you went through in the seven days is a testimony. All what you went through is for you to be able to win somebody else over to Christ. Now you can actually relate to what they have going on. I can't relate to every single thing because all of our journeys are different. But your journey was to help somebody else. So what are you doing? What are you doing with it? Are you helping somebody else? Or now that you have gotten so standoffish that nobody can even reach you? Talk to my secretary. <laughs> hey, I always used to be able to call you on your phone. Now nah, I'm not available. Leave a message. What happened? Did you get so busy that you forget Christ was the one that you begin with in the beginning? He was the one that gave you the instructions to get there, how can you forget? You did not get your job on your own. You did not make it till 43 by yourself. If it was by your own will or your own ways, you would have been dead already. Because God knows that the choices we make are not life-making choices. They're not. Prove me wrong if you want to. But I know the choices I would have made. And yes, I was raised in church all my life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm supposed to be the church boy. That's what they call it. Oh, the church boys are the worst. That's what they say. <laughs> but the thing, the thing about it is that when you're raised in church for a very long time, what happened is that I don't know if you become numb to the word of God in, in a certain aspect of it. It's like you, you, you're used to the stories. You know all the parables. You know all the... Give me something new, something fresh. Tell me how something... And then I was in the Baptist church, so I know everything Baptist. You know what I mean? So when I, when I, when I moved to America, I was like, I got a job, and then I told them I couldn't work on Sunday, and then they said, hey, Sunday, if you work Sunday, it's extra hours. And I said, oh, sweet, I'll take it. And guess what? I took that extra hours... And now I'm working every Sunday because it's extra hours. And then when the church folks would pass by, I would run, go hide so that they don't see me. Guilty conscience. as the Lord. <laughs> but then me, I just wanted to do what I wanted to do. Make sense? We all go through that phase. We just want to do what we want to do. I've been in church all my life. But it has to count for something. And how it counts for something is that I have to believe the word of God. That's spoken over my life. The funny thing about it, when um, Sister Sherry um, speaks, and whenever she comments, she always say, I believe that, I receive that. Right? I like that. Because once she knows who it's coming from, it's not, oh, it's not coming from Pastor Corey. That's the Lord speaking to Pastor Corey. From and she's going to do exactly what it takes to get that end result. You want to be blessed. You want to be made free. How? There's a process to it. When it says forgive your brother, it's a process. So why are we not willing to go through the process? Why do we bail out on the process? Why don't we stay in church long enough to get the word that will deliver us and make us free? The instruction that we need on that job to be okay with that boss. Why don't we stay in, in church long enough to get that instruction? It's, everything is in the word. If you ain't getting in church, read the Bible. It's in the word. 
If you have any, if you have any issues, if you have any complications, if you have any anything, you can find it in the Word of God. But then the thing about us is that we don't want to find it because we are okay with it. Because now we have to be held accountable to what the Word of God says. Because He gives us the instruction, and then now we have to apply it. And some of us don't even want to know what the instruction is because we don't want to be held accountable to the, instru to the instruction, right? Sometimes I'm like, I don't even want to know. But I remember, I remember when they were teaching on tithes and offering 10 years ago, I was like, tithes and offering teaching on Sunday. I ain't coming to church. I don't want to know about that stuff. I barely making it now. You're going to teach about money. I don't, uh-uh. I was one of them. I'm just telling the truth, Right? And a lot of us do that because every time they mention tithe and offering inside church, half of the church disappear. <laughs> it doesn't make no sense to me. But if the pastor said he was giving away $50, everybody showed up. But in order for the pastor to give the $50, he had to bring his tithe and offering into the house of God. He had to be obedient to the instruction of God. And then he ripped the blessings of God in order to be a blessing to you. And you're wondering why he blessed and you not. You're wondering why it's working out for Sister Katie and it's not working out for you. You're wondering why you can't walk in the same thing that they're walking in because you're not doing the same thing that they're doing. Let's just do the basics. I always say do the basics. At least just do the basics. The basic is just have a relationship with God. That's basic. And have faith and believe everything that he tells you. Don't believe me, but believe what the word of God is saying to you. Don't believe the other sister or the other brother, but believe what the word of God is saying through them. It makes sense. And if it don't make sense to you, so believe it anyways. Because God, and God, did, God, did, God did not give all the understanding to you. You have to ask for it. That's why he say, if you lack understanding, ask for it. If you lack wisdom, ask for it. So it might sound confusing to you, but if you ask for the understanding and the wisdom, he'll give it to you so that you'll be able to walk that thing out. But don't just ignore it because it doesn't make sense. How are you going to go to a next level if you're not ready to embrace New things. New beginning, right? Nobody wants to embrace change, but change is part of new beginning. The word of God came to change you. More of him, less of you. That's change. Because Charles has been doing a lot of things his way for a very long time. 43 years to be exact. So less of me, more of him. That's change. That come, that's discipline. And in order to get the results of those change, I have to be consistent. I have to be faithful over it. I have to be willing to do it every single day for seven days, seven years, 70 years. But are you willing to do that? I always say the, 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 the verse say, prove me now. If I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you a blessing, it says prove. I like to prove God. Why not? You want everybody else to prove their love to you. Buy you roses, pick you up, open up your door, take you to dinner. That's proving, right? Oh, he's so sweet. Oh, she's so great. Prove. So if, you, if you're expecting them to prove their love to you, why don't you expect God to prove his love to you? For the same thing, you're expecting it. So what do you expect from God? And then when you expect something from God, are you willing to go through the process to get there? Same thing like relationship. You want them to prove their love to you. It's a process in order to build that relationship. Amen? So the process of God requires your faithfulness and your willingness to obey the instruction that he has given you. Yes, it might not happen instantly, like the instant mashed potatoes, 
And if you talk about instant mashed potatoes, they taste nasty anyways. Why do you want instant stuff? Let's be honest. Instant stuff, and right? They don't last long. Have you ever went to buy some furnitures from rooms to go? They last maybe about a year. They, the handles start breaking, right? They, they, they put it together so quick. They're not the, the best quality of things when they're instant. They're just quick. Have you ever gone to Walmart and put a, a, a table from Walmart together? About two weeks, it start wobbling. That's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the instant that you're looking for. But you know, when God gives you something, it lasts forever. It's genuine. It's authentic. It was built just for you. It's customized just for you. Amen? Yes, you might, not even, get, you might even get tired along the way. Yeah, we get tired. We're humans, right? Sometimes we just want to just throw in the towel. You know, many times I tell Pastor Corey, man, I wish I could just stand and watch online, online church like some of the people in this church. <laughs> Let's just tell the truth. Some of y'all, the pandemic has made you very comfortable. You'll take online church in a minute. And it makes me wonder about the greater works that we will do. How can you do greater works when you're laying in your bed? I'm just saying, prove God, right? How can you do greater works when you're laying in your bed? Corona has won the victory. Let's tell the truth. A healer? Is God still a deliverer? Is God still a protector? I met a guy yesterday, and, and I, was, I had no intention of meeting anybody when I came to clean the church yesterday. But this guy came up to me, and he said, he say, oh, you got your shot. I said, yeah, I did. <laughs> I don't understand the church, folks. Yeah, that's what he said. I don't understand the church, folks. They, they don't want to take the shot, but that shot saved my life. I said, oh, it did. He said, we got to learn how to take something in the name of Jesus. That's what I did. I said, Lord, have your way. He ain't going to kill me. Because if I pray over it and I believe God, right, I cannot get the same result that somebody else, else would get. It shouldn't kill me. And that's the thing about us. We get so scared. Because I know I was scared to take it because of other side effects and stuff. But the thing about it is that I had to do a faith walk on this one. I had to believe that God is not going to do anything or allow me to do anything that is going to cause harm to me. And I know my purpose on, on this earth is not over yet, right? Because I, there's so much more people that I need to minister to. There's so much more people that I need to help get to the next level. You have to believe those things for yourself. So why would a shot kill you? And trust me, there's so much other things that you guys have have tried, and we have tried besides a shot. <laughs> Let's tell the truth. And all of those could have killed us. But we took, we, took, we took it and tried it. And it wasn't in the name of Jesus. We walk by faith, but not by sight. And we got, we got to believe that if, some, if something is not good, just like you bless all your food, right? Because some people say, don't eat this, and don't eat that, and don't eat this, and don't eat this. But if you remember, in the beginning, God created everything. And on the seventh day, he said it was good. So for me, if I'm praying over my food, I'm believing that God will take everything that, is not, that my body doesn't need out of it and bless my food. It will be a blessing to, the, to my body. Amen? But again, you got to believe what you're saying. We sing a lot of things, and we don't believe it. We say a lot of things and we don't believe it. And that's the reason why the church walk in fear and not in faith. But God wants you guys to walk in faith because he's a promise keeper. He's the same God of yesterday, today, and forever. He hasn't changed. So, so why are you changing? Why all of a sudden you're in your feelings? Why all of a sudden your opinion means more than what the word of God means? And have you not noticed that you haven't moved an inch further than where you've been last year? 
the year before, and the year before. If you take a look around, within a pandemic, a lot of people are still prospering. And I'm not saying prospering making money. I'm saying prospering because their mind are being elevated to another level. They got closer to God. They got more educated. They did more networking during that time. But what did you do during the pandemic? Were you in fear? Did you follow the instruction that God gave before the pandemic? Did you follow the instruction that God gave during the pandemic? No, you did not. So now the pandemic is, I would say, is almost over. Although we are about to go for another one. That's what the world says. But I always tell, like, me and my mom had a conversation and I say, we are not of this world, even if we are in this world. So the pandemic doesn't affect you. It really don't, because you are a child of God. And you're covered under the anointing of God. When the angel of death was passing in that city, they put a, they put a blood, the ship blood over the doors and the posts. And the angel of death passed over it because they were protected. Jesus Christ died for our sins. He is the, the lamb that was given for us. He is the blood that we are covered under. Amen? And because we are covered underneath this blood, we cannot be affected by what's going on in this world. But if you stay and pay attention to what's going on in this world, you will start getting very doubtful. You'll start getting very fearful. You'll start believing your own opinion and everything else that they're saying and forget the instruction that God gave you. Because he gave you instruction to get through this time. Amen? Yes, people might look at you and think you're crazy <laughs> for doing what you do. Why do you go to church? We're in a pandemic and you go into church. What's wrong with you? You try and get sick. Don't come around me. <laughs> Remember, God promised promise to you. Remember the word that was spoken over your life through the man of God. Remember the words spoken to you by the prophet. Remember the words that God spoke to you while you were in your secret closet, while you were praying. For the words say, whose report will you believe? Whose report are you going to believe? Are you going to believe those of your friends? Dial one of your friends up right now and ask them to pay your rent next month and tell me if they'll do it. I can guarantee you they have 20 questions for you. But you, go, you believe everything they say. Are you going to believe those of your parents? Jesus said, who's my mother? Who's my father? Those that do the will of the Lord. Are you going to believe those of the teachers? The teacher that say, you know what? You're just dumb. You're never going to make it past fifth grade. You're never going to make it past 12th grade. Are you going to believe that, that word that was spoken over your life is years ago? Are you going to believe the words of your coworkers? The ones that say that you'll never mount up to be no manager in this building. They don't promote black people. You're not qualified. I heard that. Yeah. And I had to prove them wrong. Because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not just an ordinary person. I'm covered for the blood of Jesus Christ who makes all things possible. Amen? Amen? Do you believe those of your girlfriends and your boyfriends? Your boyfriend says don't go to church and you stop going to church. Your girlfriend says don't go to church and you stop going to church. Again, whose report are you believing? Are you believing those of your classmates? <laughs> Because y'all in the alpha, whatever they call that, and the seniority teams, whatever they call them things. And they don't do it, so we are not doing it. <laughs> you know, seniority or so whatever they call them things, right? Sororities. Sororities, you see? That's what I was trying to say. Correct me, please. Help me out. I ain't, I ain't American. Hello, help a brother out. Amen. But well, you, you see, they know what I was talking about. 
They can, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But the thing about it is that sometimes we get so connected in groups and with people that we believe them over the word of God. Because we don't want to look wrong when we're actually right. Does that make sense? Because the, the ways of God doesn't always seem right to a man. But the end result is why they're going to be like, wow, how on earth did you do that? Amen? First Peter 2 and 9. That's who God say you are. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. A chosen generation, your royalty. Do you believe that though? Do you believe that you are royalty? Why are you walking around like you're a servant? Why are you walking around like the earth is not the laws and the fullness thereof? Why are you walking around so unhappy? Have you ever seen church folks that's the most unhappiest face ever? That grinds all my gears. <laughs> it don't make no sense. Why do I have to encourage you to wake up in the morning when you know the reason why you wake up in the morning? It don't make no sense. Do you know who you are? Because you can't walk with the power if you don't know who you are. How are you going to walk with it? A police officer not knowing he's a police officer, he's just a regular guy. He can't go arrest nobody because he don't even know he has the power to arrest somebody. You are a child of God, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and you're walking around like you, you ain't got nothing going on for yourself. The world, how you doing today? <laughs> same old, same old. <laughs> same old, same old. It cannot be the same old, same old. Every day you wake up, it's a blessing. It doesn't matter what's going on around you. Every day that you have air in your nostrils, it's a blessing. I go to work and they're like, well, you're always smiling. You must not be from around here. <laughs> I say, I woke up. I don't know what the purpose of me waking up today is, but God has a purpose. And because I woke up, I, I met you. How you doing? Because imagine your life can impact so many more lives if you knew who you were in the gospel. Stop walking around here moping. Stop walking around here looking all sad, poppy face. Come on, help a brother out. You don't need a million dollars to be happy. And if you think you need a million dollars to be happy, look at the news. Because those that have a million dollars, they're not happy. They have a, a bunch of lawsuits about every little thing you can think of. And they're miserable. Just saying. Here's a promise that God gave you. He says, For I know the thoughts that I have towards you, save the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. To give you an expected end. So the promises of God, the instruction he gives you, it might sound hard. It might sound difficult. It might look hard. It might not even make no sense. But if you follow the instructions, I promise you, he will keep his word all the way to the very end. And remember when she preached, she said, conk me in Jesus. You said, conk me in Jesus. But how can he conk you in if you don't have faith? 
if you don't even believe who he is and you don't believe who you are. You gotta believe those things. You gotta believe in him because he is the one that makes everything possible. And he has never lied to you. Everybody else did. Let's tell the truth. Humans don't keep their promises. But God has kept every promise that he makes to me. As long as I do my part. Remain faithful. Remain steadfast. Remain unmovable. It doesn't matter how many people leave the church. You don't leave the church. That's not your path. That's their path. That's not their, your journey. That's their journey. But where is your relationship in? Relationship <laughs> should not be so easily moved by circumstances. And here is my thing. I never understand how when two people that are married for a long time, they get a divorce, and then the, the lady calls the guy a whole bunch of names, and the guy calls the lady a whole bunch of names. Oh, they are no good, they're this, they're cheaters, they're that, and they're that. For me, I'm like, if you guys were in a relationship for so long, where was the love? And if there was love, why did it not make it? <laughs> because the love of Christ is unconditional, right? Let's just, let's just try to get this process. The love of Christ is unconditional, and I've been trying to learn this for years, and I'm doing my best to learn it because the reason why is because in, in, in the church circle, we tend to put condition on love, whereas love is unconditional. It doesn't matter how many times I fall, God still forgives me. Why can't you forgive me? It doesn't many, matter how many times I mess up, God forgives me. Why can't you forgive me? Because the same love that the Father extends to you, why can't you extend it out to your brothers and sisters? That's what love is. So that's what I'm trying to get you guys to understand is that it doesn't matter if you have a relationship with Christ. It doesn't matter what happens around you. Your relationship needs to stay solid. And you need to do what God tells you that you need to do. Nothing around you doesn't change the purpose, the instructions that God gave you. Do we understand that? My instruction is totally different than your instruction. Your instruction is totally different than Sister Tiwana's instruction. So why when Sister Tiwana decides to leave the church, you decide to leave the church at the same time? <laughs> I'm just saying. But it happens that way, though. Why, why, why are we jumping why are we, ju why are we jumping on bandwagons because somebody decided to follow another path? That might be, that, that, that's just where either their flesh is taking them or where the Lord is taking them. Either or, at the end of the day, God's going to get the glory out of it. Because when I left the church and I did whatever I did, I came back, didn't I? The word of God always stays behind of my head. It always came back to my remembrance. I could mess up so much without him pulling me back. You get what I'm saying? Because he's, the word stays. It, it stays in your head, in your mind, in your body. You, you in areas that you're like, oh, I don't belong here. <laughs> I know I don't belong here because it doesn't feel right with the spirit of God. Yes. So, so I'm trying to get everyone to understand that he is a promise keeper. And you have to believe that he is a promise keeper. You have to believe on the word of God that's spoken over your life. You've got to believe that he is who he say he is. And no matter what happened, no matter what the circumstances, no matter how much the rain falls, no matter a hurricane comes, no matter how coronavirus comes ten times, you've got to believe that God has you covered. Amen? Amen. And that's all I got. That's all he gave me. If you don't mind, stand on your feet. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand cup of praise, amen, for this word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you all were blessed by this word today, amen. I hope it gave you all an insight. It encouraged your soul. It encouraged your spirit. You can do this. Come on, say it with me. You can do this. 
I can do this. I can do this. Because why? God got me covered. Amen? He got you covered. Because we sing it. We say it. We just have to believe it. He's a provider. He will provide. He's a healer. He will heal you. Amen? If he says something in his word that he's going to do for you, it's going to happen. But you just got to do your part. Nothing is given freely except salvation. But after salvation has been received freely, you have to do your part. You got to build that relationship. Amen? So you can get that instruction. So you can get that direction. So you can get that motivation that you need to propel you into the next level. But if you continue doing what you're doing right now, next year, around the same time, family and friends will be having the same conversation. And I'll be like, hey, what's new with you? And you'll be like, well, you know, I'm just here. You said it, things were going to change and it ain't changed. I say, why? Don't blame me because you did not receive the word of God. Blame yourself for not willing to travel in that new beginning that the pastor talked about. Going into a new beginning, you have to be willing to die off your old self. And that takes a lot. But you have to be willing to let it go. Let go some of that stuff. That's a lot of weight to be carrying around. Them things keep you up at night. Why? Are you happy with that? Let go some of that stuff and just start anew. Be faithful over a few things. Be faithful over one thing. Whatever that one thing is. Whether it's praying at 12 o'clock at midnight, praying at 6 o'clock in the morning, reading one scripture verse a day. Whatever that one thing you're going to tell God, hey, you know, I'm going to be faithful to you. I want, I want you to prove yourself to me. I'm going to be faithful to you. I'm going to go to go to work with a new attitude. I'm going to go to work representing you. Pastor Corey said in his, in his message, he said, why, why are you walking up in here any kind of way? Isn't this in the presence of God where two or three are gathered? Why do you want to come into the presence of God looking like what you're looking? Thinking like what you're thinking? How do you expect to get anything out of that if you're not expecting nothing? I came to church expecting. And every day I walk in this building, I'm expecting. And you should come to church every single Sunday expecting God to do something. Expecting God to move on your behalf. Expecting God to give your word. Amen? Because if you're not expecting, you're going to miss out on something that God want to give to you. It will be your seventh day when you actually supposed to be walking in victory, but you are not ready. You got stuck on the sixth round. You got stuck on the fifth round. And some of us are going through that fifth round over and over and over again, still on fifth round, when we should have been on the seventh day, going for seven time and receiving our blessing from God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you for your word on today, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your anointing on today, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, you are awesome in this house on today, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for meeting us here on today, Lord Jesus. For you said, Lord Jesus, that you are in our midst on today, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, we pray on today, Lord Jesus, that, Lord, you forgive us, Lord Jesus, for anything that we have done wrong, Lord Jesus. We pray on today, Lord Jesus, that, Lord, you forgive us for not believing in your word on today, Lord Jesus. We pray on today, Lord Jesus, for allowing, allowing everything else, Lord Jesus, to be a distraction, Lord. And, Lord, we pray that, Lord, you continue to have your own way, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, creating us a clean heart, Lord Jesus, and a right mind on today, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, we pray that, Lord, this word, Lord Jesus, falls on good ground on today, Lord Jesus. That, Lord, you allow it to grow, Lord Jesus, in this season on today, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, touch your people right now, Lord. Touch your people right now, Lord Jesus. Oh, let them know that, Lord, you are a promise keeper, Lord Jesus. That, Lord, you have not forsaken them on today, Lord Jesus. That, Lord, hallelujah, Lord Jesus, that, Lord, you are still with them, Lord Jesus, even till the end of time, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're doing, Lord Jesus, right now, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for encouraging the hearts of the people on today, Lord Jesus. 
We thank you, Lord Jesus, for mending broken pieces on today, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. For you doing a new thing on today, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we give you praise, Lord Jesus. We give you honor, Lord Jesus. We lift your name on high, Lord Jesus. Oh Lord, you're worthy of all the praise and all the glory on today, Lord Jesus. Oh Lord, we sing on today and we shout hallelujah, Lord Jesus. For it is the highest praise, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Oh Lord, there is none like you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. And continue to have your own way, Lord Jesus, in this house, Lord Jesus. Bless our pastors, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Continue to cover them, Lord Jesus, from the toe of the head to the sole of their feet, Lord Jesus. That no weapon formed against them will prosper on today, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, continue to give them a word, an anointing word, Lord Jesus, for this season on today, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Continue to use them, Lord Jesus. Continue to bless their home, Lord Jesus. Bless their going in and their going out, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you for what you're doing right now, Lord Jesus. Oh, we are thankful, Lord Jesus. We are thankful, Lord Jesus. And Father, we pray that, Lord, you have your own way, Lord Jesus. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank. With everything inside of us, we say thank. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you, Lord. Oh, by Satan. We have a grateful heart for everything you've done. We say thank you. 